Tornadoes are some of the most terrifying natural disasters that happen on our planet. They can strike without warning, obliterate entire cities, and can throw people and cars around like they're toys. But how exactly big and terrifying can a tornado actually get? Well, most tornadoes have wind speeds that are under 110 miles per hour and are smaller than 80 meters across. Imagine an American football field and the tornado would be about as wide as 75% of the field's length. And while it would certainly be difficult, a human could actually manage to withstand being blown away by that wind speed. But that's not what you're watching this video for, so let's just get straight into the insane world of gigantic tornadoes and where they happen. Tornadoes have been documented to occur in every continent on Earth except for Antarctica, but a vast majority of tornadoes happen here in the United States in a region known as Tornado Alley. The reasoning for this makes sense because of the area's unique geographic location. Cold, dry air flows in accompanied by the jet stream from the north, warm, dry air flows in from the deserts to the southwest, and warm, moist air flows in from the Gulf of Mexico to the south and east. The combination of all this air mixing together is what causes Tornado Alley to be such a hotspot for tornadoes, and time and time again new records have been set here. The year 2011 saw a tornado super outbreak where in just four days there were 362 tornadoes that touched down over an area spanning from Mississippi to Virginia. On just April 27th alone, there were 218 tornadoes that touched the ground here. Together in the span of just four days, these tornadoes caused over $11 billion in damages, claimed the lives of 324 people, and injured over 2,200 others. You can actually tell the path that tornadoes have taken very easily from satellite images like this one or this one, but even still, this wasn't even the most lethal tornado incident in the region. The deadliest tornado in U.S. history happened back in March 1925 in this region of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. There is no record of how fast the wind speed of the tornado may have been at the time, but it slashed through a path between all three states of 219 miles long. It traveled that distance in only three and a half hours, meaning that if the tornado instead started in Washington, D.C., it would have reached all the way to New York City in the same amount of time. In that distance, the tornado claimed the lives of 695 people, but even that wasn't the deadliest tornado in world history. A lesser-known tornado hotspot is located on the other side of the world in this region of Bangladesh and eastern India. More lives have actually been claimed in this region by tornadoes than even in Tornado Alley, and the most catastrophic of these happened back in 1989. Most people in this region live in very impoverished conditions and poorly built structures, and that combined with the insane population density of the area is what led to this disaster. The tornado struck a heavily populated area of these poorly built structures and ended up claiming the lives of over 1,300 people and injured over 12,000 more. It was considered an EF5 tornado, which is the highest possible categorization for a tornado, meaning that it had wind speeds of well over 200 miles per hour, which is capable of lifting cars, trucks, and even trains cars and turning them into missiles that can be fired over a mile away from the tornado itself. It's often not the wind that actually kills a person in a tornado, but the vast amount of debris that the tornado picks up from obliterating houses and buildings. Wooden splinters, trees, metal, cars, and even animals can all become a swirling vortex of death traveling at speeds of several hundred miles an hour. With all of this being said, however, the largest and probably most terrifying tornado known to have ever happened on our planet was the El Reno tornado, and it took place not too long ago in 2013 just west of Oklahoma City. Compared to the size of most tornadoes that I talked about in the beginning of this video, the El Reno behemoth reached a size of 2.6 miles wide and achieved a terrifying wind speed of 302 miles per hour, which is the fastest recorded wind ever taken on our planet. To put these numbers into perspective, you could actually fit two fully sovereign countries completely inside the width of the tornado, Vatican City and Monaco. Even more ludicrous is what it would look like if we put this tornado over New York City. The entire length of Central Park from end to end is almost a perfect measurement of how wide this tornado actually was, so imagine a tornado that long with winds screaming around it over 300 miles per hour. That's fast enough to severely damage even skyscrapers and can rip the asphalt straight off of streets on the ground. If you're curious what would happen to your face at those speeds, then here's a video taken from the NASA Langley Research Center back from 1946 showing exactly what would happen to you in such a tornado condition. 
If the El Reno tornado had happened literally just a few more miles to the east, it would have directly hit downtown Oklahoma City, and it probably would have destroyed the city. The scariest thing about tornadoes like this one is that they can happen in a huge variety of places with very little warning, and it's entirely possible that the next time a big one happens it won't be in a countryside field, but rather in a large city. I'm going to leave you with this fascinating map from NOAA that shows you the daily probability of a tornado strike near your house throughout the year. Enjoy! So thank you very much for watching this video. This was done in a collaboration with my good friends over at Life Noggin. The biggest volcanic eruption in recent history was the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia. It expelled ash over 620,000 square miles and shot volcanic gases more than 20 miles into the air. I would highly recommend you checking out their video next, and if you enjoyed my video then I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can check out some earlier videos of mine over here on the left, check out my Patreon over here on the right if you'd like to support the channel, and I hope to see you again later this week on Friday for another new video then.